Hi, it's Paris from Epic Review Guys, and there's something exciting to watch today! And no, I don't mean the Thursday night football game, though I will be watching that too, but before that I'm going to take the kids out in the yard about 6 o'clock p.m. Central Time to watch the partial solar eclipse. Now do you have your telescope, your binoculars, your high-tech gear already? Well, put it all away, you won't need any of that. All you need is two sheets of paper. Epic Review Guys Now in our house, we like eclipses, solar eclipses, and lunar eclipses. Jimena is big on science and she always wants to see the eclipses. She has a little trouble with the lunar eclipses though that are in the middle of the night. If I get up to watch them, she'll tell me the night before, wake me up, I want to see it, but I can't get her to wake up to go out and see them usually. But solar eclipses she should be good with. In any case, these eclipses remind us that there's lots of interesting things to see in the sky, which I got a real lesson on this morning. I walked Jimena to school and we saw a really nice, beautiful red sunrise. On my way home, when I turned the corner so that my back was to the sun, I saw a rainbow, which isn't that unique, except that it was not raining and that all the clouds around the rainbow were bathed in the red light of the sunrise. Here's a picture of it. Now, it wasn't raining anywhere around Austin, so it may have been that the sunlight was hitting Virga, which is uh, rain that falls out of the clouds, but as it falls down into the drier air, it evaporates and it never reaches the ground. It's like that Madonna song, like a Virga, condensed for the very first time. Or maybe not. But um, it may also have been ice crystals, little frozen ice crystals that caught the light. But this was a full-fledged rainbow with no rain, and it was a sunrise rainbow. If they don't have a My Little Pony with that name, they ought to. There's always cool stuff happening in the sky, so keep looking. Now, for today's eclipse, it will be this afternoon, and you'll be able to see it over most of North America. I can tell you that here in the central time zone, where Austin is, that it will start at about 5 o'clock and it lasts a couple hours, so you may not want to go watch the whole thing because it's a slow process, but you will want to see it when it's at its maximum, which is when the biggest chunk of the sun looks like it's missing, and that's about halfway through. So central time, that'll be about 6 o'clock, that'll be the prime viewing time. Now Jimena and I will be out there observing and recording, and I'll put up our video of today's partial solar eclipse. It's going to be partly cloudy here all day, but it's supposed to be mostly clear by that time, so we're hoping we'll have good luck with that. Let me show you how we're going to watch the partial solar eclipse. No telescope, no binoculars, and no looking at the sun. It's a clever way that you probably learned about this in elementary school, or if you're still in elementary school, hopefully your science teacher will tell you about this. It's a really interesting lesson in optics and physics and how your eyeball works. It also lets you safely watch a partial or complete solar eclipse. You will need all you'll need, now there are fancier ways to do this, but you just need two old plain pieces of paper and a pin or just some sharp metal object that you can take and poke a hole in one of the pieces of paper. Now you want this to basically be a round hole and sometimes it sort of closes after you poke it with a pin, the paper comes back in, so you may need to widen it a little. You do have to experiment a little with this to see what works best. So you have your piece of paper or if you're fancy, a piece of cardboard. Take your pin, poke a hole in it, preferably near the center because this piece of paper, that's a pretty good hole, is going to provide the shadow over the other paper that will allow you to see that. So I've got my piece of paper with my hole. Now I don't know why I'm zooming in to show you this. I'm pretty sure you know what a piece of paper with a hole in it looks like, but that's what you're looking for, or as round a hole as you can get. Now you're not going to look through the hole. Remember, never look at the sun in any way, shape, or form. What you're going to do is basically hold this piece of paper up so that it's pointing at the sun. And this is where it's a little easier if it's cardboard and it's not doing this sort of stuff on you. But hold it as straight as you can. That little hole there is going to let through just a tiny amount of sunlight. And it basically works like a lens does in that it is going to flip the image over and let you see without all the blinding glare of the sun. So you're going to take this piece of paper with the hole, point it towards the sun without looking at the sun. Then you take your other piece of paper and you're going to use this as the projector screen, sort of, and the sunlight, the little bit that comes through the hole there, will, will as it moves away from the hole, will get larger but also dimmer and it will actually let you see the sun. Okay, the sun did come out, so I get to show you this. Here's my piece of paper with the hole, another plain piece of paper. Putting this towards the sun, and you notice it creates its own shadow, so that's what's going to let you see 
the sun. Now you have to get to the right angle. I've got some leaves of the tree there. Now as I bring it in closer, it gets brighter but smaller. As I pull it further away from the other piece of paper, larger but dimmer. And you just have to experiment with that. Now of course you're just going to see a round circle if you go out and do it right now, but at the maximum time of the eclipse you should see this circle with a chunk of it missing. And there is one other way that's safe to look at the solar eclipse. Now nothing homemade, don't try to make something yourself with sunglasses. No, not going to work. If you have an approved sun filter that you've bought at a science center or something like that, they can sell you a viewing device like this sun peep mask from the Pacific Science Center in Seattle that is made to let you safely look at it, but that is the only time you can ever do that. And at this point, if you're just thinking of doing it, you probably don't have the time to run over and buy one of these. So you're going to be doing it with the piece of paper, with the hole, and the other piece of paper. Now again, experiment with the distances, maybe different colored pieces of paper. It's science, so try different things. Also, if you are lucky enough to have maybe a room in your house that uh, at, at that time of day, the sun comes in that window, and you can turn the lights off in the room, maybe close the blind part way and just let a little bit of sunlight in and then hold up your piece of paper with the hole in it and the other piece of paper in the darkened room, you'll see it really well. Now, if you're thinking, ah, I'll see the next one. Haven't there been like 20 lunar eclipses already this year? Well, not quite. And as for solar eclipses and North America, this is it until 2017. So you're gonna have to wait three years for another chance to do something like this. Now that next solar eclipse in August 2017 is going to be a doozy because it's going to be a full solar eclipse where the sky goes dark as night during the day when the eclipse is at its maximum. And uh, that's going to be for the central part of the U.S. People who are around there won't get that full effect. But um, even using something like this, whereas today you'll see some 25, 30, 40 percent of the sun missing. On that day, you may see 80 or 90 percent. You may just see a sliver of the sun that's all that's left. So doing this today is good practice for that. And you, if you really get excited about this stuff, you may want to plan to, even if you have to travel, go somewhere to see that eclipse in 2017. If you're a kid and you really like this stuff, tell your parents now, hey, where are we going to be? during summer vacation, August 2017, I want to go somewhere where we can see that full eclipse. I have seen one full solar eclipse in my lifetime and I basically got up at four in the morning. Why am I always getting up at four in the morning? With um, uh, two friends of mine. This was, I was a sophomore junior in high school and we drove from Seattle across the mountains to Eastern Washington and basically we didn't know where to go to see it. We ended up on a hillside on the side of the highway that a bunch of people had stopped and gone up on the hillside with no trees. So we went up on the hillside too with hundreds of strangers and we watched as the moon went completely in front of the sun. The sky turned dark. You could see the stars. It was just like nighttime. If you experience something like that, you will remember it your entire life. You can bet in August 2017, I'm going to make sure my kids get a chance to see that total solar eclipse. So think of today's partial solar eclipse as a warm-up and practice for the big one coming in 2017. So Jimena and I will be out at 6 o'clock this afternoon central time at the peak of this partial solar eclipse to see what we'll be able to see and we'll record the whole thing, let you know how it worked for us. If you go out and give this a try, which I really recommend you do, let us know how it worked for you. If you really didn't find this satisfactory, then sometime before 2017, you might want to go out and buy some kind of a safe viewing device. Even if you only use this once to view a full solar eclipse, it is so worth it to be able to see that. Shopping is easy when you know what to buy. At Epic Review, guys, a gift of a try. What does the fox buy? Nobody knows, but before he goes shopping, he watches our